Hey everybody, welcome to Odd and Untold, the podcast where we talk about all things strange and spooky. And it is the holiday season, so happy Hanukkah to everybody who's celebrating, happy Kwanzaa, whatever you're celebrating, happy holidays. And uh, I celebrate Christmas, and as you may be able to tell, I have on my, my Christmas colors, the green and red. And this week, I just thought we'd talk about some Christmas ghost stories. Christmas and ghosts kind of go hand in hand. Uh, Christmas Carol, you know, ghost of Christmas past, ghost of Christmas present, Christmas future, yet to come. So, and John and I talked about some scary, spooky horror movies last year, Christmas themed. Uh, and I think there was like one or two New Year's themed, but basically Christmas themed horror movies. Uh, we're going to do that again this year, I think. We're going to talk about a few more uh, Christmas themed movies that are spooky slash paranormal slash scary. Uh, but this week, I just wanted to talk about some ghost stories. I don't really have any myself. Christmas has always been sort of fairly happy for me and, and paranormal free, thank God. Um, but there's a few family stories about Christmas, and I, I think I've mentioned them in older episodes. But there is one story that in my family, every year on Christmas Day, my great-grandmother's doorbell would ring at the same time. And this happened year after year after year, and there was nobody ever there. I, most of the family who was coming had keys to the building. They could get in. Nobody was really ringing the bell. So it was just odd that year after year on Christmas Day, the bell would ring. And this went on for years until my great-grandfather died, and then it never happened again. So, And it wasn't him. He was, he was elderly. He was blind. And he was always with us. So it wasn't him ringing the bell. But, you know, was it a ghost? Was it paranormal? But... Cool little story from the family. Uh, but I know a lot of people have, you know, things happen to them on Christmas. And the stories we're going to talk about today, some of them are a little bit more on that sweet side, like where, or, you know, a, a relative who has passed is kind of coming back and giving a sign. And then others are a little bit spookier. So take that as you will. But a lot of the stories, as I said, are kind of like somebody coming back to give a sign and... It just reminds me of a story my mother tells that after my grandparents passed away, like the first Thanksgiving that we had where they weren't there because they had passed, um, she had a towel in the bathroom that never falls. It's like a, a little towel rack and it fell like multiple times. And my mother just kind of acknowledged like, okay, ma, like I will clean, I will dust, you know, <laughs> like we got people coming over. So just little things like that, that, you know, is, is that us just, interpreting things a certain way because we want to or is that really them giving us a sign but these things do tend to happen around holidays and birthdays and important dates so it, it, it's good that people pay attention to that so i'm going to read some stories today these are just from reddit uh but it's people giving their accounts of weird things that have happened on christmas and like i said some of them are, are very sweet and heartwarming and a few of them are a little little on the spooky side so let's get to some spooky christmas stories Okay, so as I said, this is from Reddit, and the subreddit is Ghost Stories, ironically enough. And I just pulled Christmas ones out of this, and I'm, I tried to pick some really good ones. Your mileage may vary, of course, depending on what you're looking for here. But our first story is called A Haunted Christmas Eve, and this is from Braver High from two months ago. So their experience. Ten years ago, I, then 16 female, now 26 female, had eaten a lot at Burger King on the four-hour journey to my grandparents' house. When we arrived to see my nan, it was Christmas Eve, and, as I still do now, when I get excited or happy, I jumped around the house, which, combined with the Burger King lunch, unfortunately made me feel really queasy. This was a sadder Christmas than usual, as my grandpa had passed away earlier that year from Alzheimer's disease, but my family were determined to lift my nan's mood with a fun and loving Christmas. Now, on to the spooky bit. I decided to sleep off the self-inflicted nausea whilst my family took my nan to a local fish and chip restaurant, leaving me on my own in the bungalow my nan and grandpa built themselves. I was woken up by the sound of loud music. It was Nat King Cole's song, which is my nan's favorite artist. Being sleepy and not thinking straight, I asked my grandpa to switch it off. Immediately, the music stopped. This made me wake up properly, as of course my grandpa had passed away. Tentatively, with my heart racing, I left the bedroom and shouted to see if the rest of the family had got home, but they hadn't. I was still all alone. I went into the living room and saw that my grandpa's stereo system, he loved technology, had a Nat King Cole CD inside, so I unplugged the stereo and went back to bed. 
It wasn't long after falling into an uneasy sleep that the Nat King Cole music blared out even louder. It was so loud, it was even reverberate, uh, it was reverberating around the bungalow, and I started to cry, feeling freaked out. I yelled, Grandpa, please turn it off. I don't feel well. The music stopped. I don't want to get I didn't want to get up again, so I stayed awake until my family came back after uh, about a half hour later. After telling my mom, she checked the stereo, and sure enough, it was unplugged. Since then, my nan's dementia has gotten worse, and she often forgets about my grandpa, remembering only about a handsome, kind man and stroking his photo for comfort. The stereo still comes on loudly, usually when she's being difficult to care for or unpleasant, a horrible side effect of dementia, and it calms her immediately. We all think it is our grandpa, in his own sweet way, saying as he used to, don't worry, pet, it's going to be all right. So... Again, here's a story where there's a past loved one, and uh, it just reminds me of a story that my friend Christy told back on the Halloween episode where she was home alone in the house, and someone was calling her, and it just sounded like um, her grandfather. So just don't know what to make of that, but she's kind of talking to this spirit. So there's two things here. I mean, one, it's the stereo is playing even when it's unplugged which is weird in and of itself, but these are things we hear, you know, telephones will ring when there's no service or they're unplugged or radios or TVs will turn on and play music or play television show when they're not on. Uh, my friend, John, who's on the show a lot, he mentioned that he had a DVD player that would show messages when like no one was touching the remote. So like you have these weird electrical anomalies, uh, but it's interesting that, this person is talking to their grandfather and saying, you know, turn the music off and then it goes off, even though it was unplugged to begin with. So very strange, but a, a cool little story and, and not really spooky. Cause again, if it is this person's grandfather, then that's sweet and that's comforting in its way. So um, we will move on to story number two. Okay, so this one comes to us from user Trash Noodle. This is six months ago. Experience on Christmas Eve. I haven't had many experiences of things you could consider paranormal, but there's one moment I still remember from my childhood years ago that I still wonder about to this day. I was pretty young at the time, maybe six or seven, and I shared a room with my older sister. It was Christmas Eve or early Christmas morning, and we both woke up around the same time when we heard something. Noises coming from downstairs, faint but audible banging and footsteps. Our brother was in his own room sleeping, and our parents were asleep too. I was just a kid at the time, so of course I excitedly thought it must be Santa Claus then. Once the possibility of it being our parents was ruled out. My sister was old enough to know Santa wasn't actually real, but to keep me oblivious and from panicking, as I very easily scared as a kid, she went along with it. Despite my excitement, though, I was extremely afraid of the dark and all the lights were out, so I didn't go and check what it was. The most I did was peer around from our bedroom door and listen as the noise downstairs grew softer. I could hear my parents snoring in their room across from ours. Their door was always open, so I could clearly hear them. Thinking back on it years later, when I was older, I started to wonder who or what was making those sounds from downstairs. We never had any intruders in the house or burglaries. My parents always made sure to lock the doors every night, so I didn't understand what could have caused the noise but it did sound like someone walking around, dragging stuff across the floor faintly, and though we had creaky floorboards, it didn't sound like those. Me and my sister sometimes talked about it, and we were both very certain our parents were upstairs as we both heard them, so there was no way it could have been them moving stuff around. But someone was. We were both sure of it. I'm 50-50 in terms of believing in the paranormal. I think there are things out there that sometimes we don't have any explanation for, but I'm also a bit of a skeptic too, so I'm not really sure if this was some kind of paranormal experience or not, but I definitely remember the details of what happened that night, and I still can't really explain them. I just know I heard something, and I wasn't the only one. So this is an interesting story, because again, they're, they're debunking it. I mean, he was a child. His immediate thought was Santa Claus. You know, he's not thinking ghost. He's not thinking paranormal. He's thinking Santa's there because he still believes in Santa. His sister didn't, but his sister also heard the noises. So they kind of did their debunking. They're saying, oh, right, mom and dad are in bed. Our brother's in bed. It's got to be Santa. Uh, not only, it wasn't only, you know, it wasn't until he was older that he started realizing like, well, hey, it wasn't any of us in the house. It probably wasn't a burglar or a robbery because there would have been stuff missing. There would have been clear signs of a break-in 
uh, stuff would have been stolen. So you could say it was a kid's overactive imagination at the time, but you would think that as he got older, as they became adults, the sister would have said, Hey, no, I was just kind of going along with you. Uh, you know, you were hearing things. I wanted you to think that Santa was downstairs. Cause again, in winter, any extreme weather temperature changes, houses can creak and make sounds and floorboards and the house settles, uh, pipes will bang and clank. And so it can make it sound like there's movement, but they both heard it. And the sister didn't believe in Santa at the time. And even if she did, I mean, as they're both adults, if they're both hearing this, what was it? It wasn't just him. It wasn't just his mind. Again, Santa on the brain, kind of like if you have UFOs on the brain or Bigfoot on the brain, you're going to see these things. Um, it just reminds me of a story. My mother used to tell me when I was a kid, I was so excited for Christmas and I was probably like four or five, but I swore up and down that I saw Santa Claus peeking in our window. We lived on the second floor. We had a second floor apartment <laughs> in Brooklyn and uh, I swore you know, I saw Santa peeking in the window and clearly I didn't. And it wasn't even a mistake because it's not like somebody walking by in the sidewalk who looked like Santa. I mean, this was a second floor window facing an alley. And I was a hundred percent convinced I saw Santa. Santa was there. He was peeking in. So I do understand that kids can have Santa on the brain. You're expecting it, you know, and we teach these kids, you know, he sees you when you're sleeping. He knows when you're awake, like, um, kids are going to just anticipate Santa. But if the sister heard it too and didn't believe in Santa, I'm not sure how, what to make of this one. So was it a ghost? I don't know. I like that this person kind of says they're 50, 50 on paranormal things that they believe that there's something to it, but they're also kind of skeptical. So it's just an unexplained occurrence. They don't know what it was. Something happened. They heard noise and they can't explain it. So I think this is a really cool story just because multiple witnesses and they kind of debunked it. It's it's not another family member. It wasn't a burglary. So what was it? It's very cool. Okay. Story number three. And this comes to us from user who, if not me, 1969. And this one's titled haunted Christmas tree. So pretty cool. Uh, so his experience or her experience. So this happened when I was a kid, December, 1980. I was at a neighbor's apartment with my sister. I remember we were watching the Sugar Ray Leonard, Robert, Roberto Duran, No Moss fight. I'm guessing it must have been a rebroadcast of the fight because the fight actually happened on November 25th, 1980, and we were watching it in December. There were three of us in the room, me, 10 years old, my younger sister, eight years old, and our neighbor. I think she was a couple of years older than me. Our moms were hanging out at my apartment two doors down. So we were sitting on the couch, which faces the front window. TV is to our right. There was a Christmas tree in front of the window, probably 10 feet from the couch. I remember looking at the Christmas tree and seeing an ornament jiggle. I asked the girls if they saw that, and they said no. I said an ornament moved, but they didn't believe me. So I got up and walked over to the tree. As I was walking over, I saw the ornament jiggle again. When I got about two feet from it, the ornament popped off the tree and hit me square on the chest and fell to the ground. Funny thing was that I wasn't scared. I asked the girls if they saw that. Of course they didn't. They were directly behind me. They didn't believe me either. I remember it like it was yesterday. So this one, interesting. You have some sort of physical movement here. You have an ornament that seems to be moving on its own. And then it jumps off the tree and hits this guy in the chest. Uh, he was 10 years old or she, I don't know. Uh, but there's obviously some movement here, but no other witnesses. The other kids didn't see it. So could this have been imagination? Could this have been a 10 year old child just misinterpreting things possibly uh, the ornament moving or jiggling that I could see. I mean, that could be just a, a function of the building. I mean, this says, you know, they were apparently in an apartment building. Our moms were hanging out at my apartment two doors down. So it could have been someone downstairs moving someone upstairs, moving and just jiggling the tree enough where this ornament jiggled, but to have it kind of jump off and hit you in the chest. I mean, that that's, very interesting kinetic activity to have that jump and hit someone in the chest. So again, not too sure about this one. Uh, 10 year olds again, can, can their perceptions can be a little bit off, especially around Christmas time and Santa and all that stuff. Magic. Um, he says he wasn't scared. Um, but 
I don't know what to make of this one. So not as impressive as as the previous one, but I thought it was cool nonetheless because it did have some kinetic activity. Haunted ornament. Okay, so now we're going to get into a more spooky Christmas story. Uh, This one is from user Falling to the Ancients, and this is titled 4 a.m. Christmas Morning. So myself and a friend had something happen the other day. Left another friend's house about 4 a.m. It's dark. Street lights have just come back on. They get turned off at 1 a.m. every day, back on at 4 a.m. every day to save money. And it's a clear night, a couple of clouds in the sky. Looks nice with the moon and all. Anyways, my friend and I are walking door just two minutes go around the corner of the road. I don't know what that means. It's a dead-end road, one way in, one way out, and goes downhill. And in front of us, about 50 meters away, is five people, two children, and what likes what looks like the parents of an elderly woman. It's a bit odd. Family out at 4 a.m. stood under the street light. Not impossible to happen. People are unpredictable. As we get closer, they look really odd now. White shirts, beige trousers, and dresses. Exactly the same colors. Again, not impossible, just odd. Getting closer across the road from them now, and you can see how daunting they look. Black rings around their eyes. They don't look healthy. Sunken faces, etc. Quite creepy now, but even creepier when they just stare, eyes following the whole way. My friend, who is female, is clearly terrified as something really isn't sitting well with them. So we walk on a bit faster. I grab her closer to me just in case anything happens. I'd rather she get away safe. So we carry on for literally seconds before a stone flies by and hits the pavement in front of us. Made us jump. Friend was even more scared now. I got annoyed, so turned to confront them, and they are gone. They were there mere seconds before, and now completely gone from where they were. They were there nowhere to hide. There's nowhere to hide so fast. Sorry, this is a little grammatically (laughs) poorly written, so I'm stumbling here. There's nowhere to hide so fast. No other ways out of the road. They have to run past us to get away. They wrote rum. Now we are running down the road, away from where they were. Friends crying. I'm getting tense. I hate dark. And honestly, I was fucking scared too. So I tell her to hold on to me and stay close and move to move to a walk as we get further down the road. The road itself takes about 10 minutes to walk down. We are probably six minutes in, but looking behind us constantly. We get to the end of the road, turn around again, nothing. But the lights turn off only for about 20 seconds. Now we are submerged in darkness. We can see at the end of the road by a bus stop. And at that bus stop, we see five people, two children, their parents, and the elderly woman just standing there staring. We have nowhere else to go now. I've called my friends to see if they are awake, but their phone's dead, so can't contact anyone. My friend is still scared shitless. So am I, but I start to get angry scared, so I march towards them to be like, TF, you playing at? Uh, The lights turn back on, makes me jump. I look around, grab my friend, go to head towards them again, and they are gone. I still have their faces and clothing all imprinted in my mind. This was Christmas Day morning, so 4 a.m. Christmas Day. My friend doesn't understand what happened, and I for sure don't. We've tried to talk to friends about it, but they think the darkness tricked our minds. It's something I can't stop thinking about, and I dream about it. More nightmares and can barely sleep since. Any suggestions? Sounds fucking crazy, I know, but I don't care. This happened. So in this one, you do have two witnesses. You have these witnesses kind of seeing these um, kind of ghastly, ghostly figures. Um, Black rings around their eyes. They don't look healthy. Sunken faces. So uh, this is kind of spooky. This is not just seeing apparitions. This is seeing like um, not good apparitions i mean usually when you hear things like this with the sunken eyes the dark eyes uh this story just reminded me of like black eyed kids so i'll put a link to that in the description below if you don't if you're not familiar with the phenomenon of black eyed kids uh but i've also investigated some cases where our clients have mentioned apparitions with no face at all and and that's usually not a good sign either it's just kind of spooky uh, to see a fully formed human being and just no face. Don't know what it means, but it, it's it's got a creepy tinge to it. Like, why is there no face? Or why why is their face, like in this story, gaunt with black eyes? Um, so again, they're just saying the, 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 the dress is a little odd. White shirts, beige trousers and dresses, exactly the same colors. So it almost sounds like a uniform. Uh, but then they disappear, then they're back, they disappear. So a little spooky. It's Christmas morning, it's late. And again, 
could they have been drunk? Could they have been on some substances? Who knows? It's 4 a.m. Christmas Day. Uh, some of their friends don't believe them. But they're pretty convinced this happened. There was a second witness, so it's not a hallucination. It's not just somebody bumbling down the street at night and mistaking these people uh, for something else or mistaking something else for these people. It's two people seeing these these weird apparitions or or entities so very strange and then just not not that heartwarming sort of christmas feel like some of the other stories had this is a little little bit more ominous so let me know what you guys think about this one this one i'm a little iffy about as well but i do like that there's two witnesses so let us move on to the next story okay so back to something a little bit more uplifting uh this is from user garland 1988 someone came to say merry christmas from the other side so this is one of many stories I have. I never considered myself psychic or sensitive until a few years ago when I found out stories like mine weren't common with everyone. So before I can tell the story, I have to give some background. Bear with me. My brother and I have different dads. Unfortunately, his dad passed away a year prior to when this story is set. My mom and his dad did not do well together. He wasn't a bad guy, just troubled and really didn't know how to be a good partner. My mom said that after they separated and she met my dad and got pregnant with me, my brother's dad said, you finally got the girl you always wanted. This was something she had told him when they were together, that she always wanted a daughter, but obviously they didn't stay together to have another kid. When I was little, he was always really sweet to me, not in a creepy way, just always interested in asking how I am. My mom said she felt like he always felt drawn to me, maybe because he regretted the end of his relationship with her and I, in some way, made him think of what could have been. Who knows? Okay, so moving on to the story. A few weeks after my brother's dad died, I had a dream that I was in a hallway with him. He told me he was okay and that he wanted to show me something. He grabbed a door handle, opened the door, and the brightest light came through, but then I woke up. I so wish I could remember what he showed me or if he did show me anything at all. Okay, now fast forward in time. It was Christmas Eve, 2009, a year later. I was upstairs in my bedroom, and I heard music playing. We had a room next to mine with all kinds of toys because I had a lot of nieces and nephews that came over. I assumed the music was coming from there, so I walked into the room to check. It was not coming from that room, and I realized it was coming from the bathroom. Uh, the bathroom? Odd, I thought. I went in there and realized the music was coming from a three-tier box, each tier with a drawer where my mom kept jewelry and other keepsakes. As soon as I touched the box, the music abruptly stopped. I was 21 at this time, and in all the years of living with my parents, I had never heard music come from this box, and she has had it my entire life. I go downstairs to tell my mom... The weirdest thing just happened, and I tell her the story. Her face goes completely white. She looks totally freaked out, and her eyes well up with tears. She then tells me that this is a jewelry box that her ex-husband, my brother's dad who died, gave her on their wedding day. She said it hasn't played music in 35 years because it broke. We even went upstairs to try to recreate the music and get it to work with no luck. I just smiled and shrugged and said, well, I guess he is saying Merry Christmas. I don't know why he chooses me to go through for these messages. We were not close, but I do think part of it is that he knows I won't brush things off as my brain or something weird. I feel they are from him and he knows I'll share the message. My brother pretty much hasn't been very receptive to the message and I don't want to make him uncomfortable or upset him. Sorry this is so long, but wanted to share as it's special to me. So that last bit, uh, I've actually had conversations with people about this because you have certain people in life who say, I never have any paranormal experiences. Nothing ever talks to me. Nothing ever happens to me. And then you have other people who have a lot of things happen to them. So it just makes you wonder, like, why are certain people seeing these things? Is it just because they believe? And and I think there's something to that. I, I, I don't think they're imagining everything. But I think if you're receptive to things, I, I think these phenomena are going to happen to you. And if we go with the premise that ghosts are real, and they are the souls or spirits or energy of a deceased individual. And it might take a lot of energy for these ghosts to get someone's attention. And if they're going after someone who's not paying attention or hears it and doesn't really react to it or bring it to the attention of other people, then that spirit may just not go to them anymore. They're going to go to someone who does pay attention and does say, oh my God, what was that? Let me go tell everybody. Uh, because if they're trying to get a message across, that's what they need. They need someone who's going to hear the message and then spread the message. So just a theory, I don't know. Um, but I did think that was interesting. 
uh, that he just felt, you know, he was a little bit more open and uh, that these things aren't brushed off by him, that he will experience these things and then tell people about it. So maybe uh, his, his brother's father just knew that about him and that's what he wanted to do. But again, you hear about this broken music box that hasn't played music and it's playing music. It's sort of like the radio that's not plugged in that is playing music. So strange, but again, heartwarming if, if this is just her her deceased husband who's just, you know, trying to pass on a message to her, just trying to communicate with her on Christmas. So cool story. So here's another grandfather story. This is from user Chaos Breezy. My grandpa came to see me for Christmas. This is a hard story to tell because it was my best and worst experience dealing with the supernatural. It's the best because it proves not all ghost stories are about vengeful spirits and dark shadows that go bump in the night. It's the worst because just read for yourselves. It was a week before the first Christmas after my grandpa died and I'd stayed the night in my grandma's after we'd gone Christmas shopping the day before. My grandma was still taking it hard and I'd been trying to help cheer her up. We had just gone out to do more shopping for gifts, boxes, and paper, the usual wrapping stuff. Then we went to McDonald's to grab some takeout for lunch. When we got back, we ate lunch and watched Christmas movies in the living room till my mom got there to pick me up. So more fast food. The first, very first story was about Burger King. These guys went to McDonald's. I guess all that shopping wore her out because halfway through the movie, we were watching my grandma f fell asleep. As I was sitting there, I started to think about my grandpa. We were always real close, and his passing really hit me hard, but I was trying not to show it around my grandma. I was missing him a lot, and I didn't actually want to stay over at my grandma's house as much as I used to, because being there brought up all the memories of him and just made me miss him more. I never even went into his bedroom anymore because it was just too sad. While my grandma was sleeping, I tried to pay attention to the movie, but all I could think about was my grandpa and all the fun stuff we did for Christmas and how I just wanted to see him again. Then all of a sudden, the room started to feel cold. At first, I thought it was a draft. Then everything felt heavy, and it got quite quiet, real quiet. The clock stopped ticking, no car noises, no nothing. It was like the whole world had just stopped. It looked all the color had started to fade away till everything had just turned gray. Then my whole body felt like pinprickles, and it felt like someone was watching me. As I looked up, I almost screamed in shock. There in the doorway that led into the hall was my grandpa. He was just standing there smiling at me, wearing his favorite cream color, brown pinstripe, shirt sleeve, button-up shirt, blue jeans, brown belt, white socks, brown loafers, and brown glasses. The only thing different was a kind of glow around him. I sat there frozen for what seemed like an hour. Then I started to stand up. I don't know why, maybe to hug him or maybe just to touch him to see if he was actually there. I don't know. But the second I got to my feet, he was gone, and the world went back to normal, with all the sounds and color back, like someone had just hit the unpause button. I just stood there for a second, then realized I was crying and went to get a tissue. An hour later, my mom came and got me. She and my grandma talked for a bit, but I stayed quiet, debating on whether or not to tell them what happened. I decided not to say anything to my grandma just yet, but told my mom everything on the car ride home when she noticed I was nervous about something. My mom was so shocked she had to pull the car over. She asked me like a million questions, mostly if I was positive on what I saw, and each time I told her yes, and describing the whole thing over and over again. I then started to cry, and she hugged me to calm me down, even though she was crying too. When we calmed down, she told me it was okay, but to never tell my grandma about what I saw that day. After that, I still visited my grandma, but never by myself, and I didn't stay overnight again. The weirdest part of all that was even though I was freaking out at what part I saw of me wanted to see him again. So a, a spooky story. Um, again, you know, some people are going to be very happy to see a deceased loved one and others, it's going to freak them out a little bit. And th this person sounds like he was very freaked out uh, seeing this apparition. The, the, the world sort of stopping around him is very interesting to me. You don't hear this a ton in ghost stories. You hear this more in missing 411 cases, uh, Bigfoot encounters, you'll hear like the woods got quiet. Uh, a lot of the missing 411 stories, uh, people who have either disappeared and were found or people who, you know, just had weird experiences in the woods will tell about this where it seems the world seems to pause, like the noise all stops, the wind stops, the leaves don't move. 
sometimes the color can drain. Uh, you, you, but you hear these things in these missing 411 cases where people have these weird experiences where the world seems to pause, uh, almost like the person is being pulled out of that moment and they can still kind of see things in that moment. They can still see the trees or their house or whatever is around them, but it's paused and it's like they're being pulled out of that and then they're back. And that's why a lot of people think this is what missing 411 is and the people who are here to still tell us about it are just failed attempts of whatever this is to pull them out of our reality again it's it's a stretch but again it just it, it reminded me of that because you don't really hear this in a lot of ghost stories you know people see a ghost and it you know can be a fleeting thing it could be a lengthier thing but i haven't really heard this phenomenon in ghost stories much like, like i said it's bigfoot stories you'll hear the 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 local wildlife will go quiet crickets birds uh little animals you know squirrels everything goes quiet but you don't really hear that in ghost stories too much. So I thought that was interesting. So what do you guys think? Let me know. Okay. So this next story gets a little bit more into the, the spooky again. Uh, this is from user waifu pillow seven and it's just titled Christmas ghost story. This story happened to me when I was 11. So this was five years ago. So this person is 16 writing this a little background info. When the house that this story takes place was being remodeled, one of the workers who worked by himself heard very strange things like tapping, breathing, and there were often cold spots that he would notice scattered throughout the basement. I was at my grandparents' house to celebrate Christmas with my family. This, however, took place, I believe, on the 23rd. It was getting late for us. It was around 11, 1130-ish, and my parents put me to bed. My grandparents usually have a guest bedroom, which whenever I came over, I slept in, but my mom wanted to sleep in an actual bed instead of on the couch. So my mom took the guest bedroom upstairs and I slept on the couch in the basement. And my stepfather took the couch upstairs in the living room. So I grabbed my tablet and my blankets and pillows and went downstairs. The layout is very important here. You go down the stairs and there is like a small rec room to the left of the stairs. And if you turn right, you get the laundry stuff and bathroom. If you go left and go forward, you'll reach a closet, a storage room and my uncle's bedroom. My uncle's bedroom is right across from the storage room. I got on the couch and set up to charge my tablet. I was having fun since there was nobody but my uncle down there who was asleep, so I could be on it as long as I could. The basement wasn't pitch black, though. There was a little bit of light coming from the laundry room, so I could sort of see what I then saw. I was on my tablet, and the charger came out. The charger is a bit broken, so it popped out every now and then. So when I leaned to push it back in, I saw this black shadow. I can tell it was female since it had very long dress like thing and slowly moved from my uncle's room into the storage room. But when I froze and stared at it, the entire basement went pitch black. I then got up and slowly went to the stairs. I didn't scream because I had no idea if the thing would hurt me or not. So I slowly went up the stairs, opened the guest bedroom my mom was staying in and laid on the ground crying a little bit. I still go to that house about twice every month or so. And every time I go into that basement, I sit in the same exact spot to see if I'm able to see what I saw when I was a little kid. So it's a Christmas story, but this sounds like a shadow person. Uh, so the first thing I want to point out is the, uh, the workers who remodeled the house. And this is something we hear a lot in the paranormal field is that when a, a, a house or a building is remodeled, it tends to kick up paranormal activity and a lot of times the workers will talk about sounds and voices and tools will go missing cold spots a lot of the stuff that's mentioned here when there's a remodel going on for whatever reason it seems to kick up paranormal activity and, and again some theories are just that you know the ghosts that are there are unhappy because you're changing the layout and they like the house the way it was and uh, I, I don't know, you know, I don't know what it is. Maybe it's just because, you know, all the drywall is down and you can hear different things. And, uh, it is weird when you remodel a house, like you just get an echo because the furniture is out of the room. And, uh, again, there's, there's tools, there's things in there that aren't supposed to be in there. So who knows? But I thought that was interesting that this was mentioned because we do hear about this a lot, um, when investigating the paranormal. And that's one of the few things we will ask. One of the many things we will ask, uh, just, um, have you had done any remodeling? Uh, has anything changed in the house? Have you added anything? Have you torn anything out? Uh, because that does tend to, for whatever reason, spike paranormal activity or unusual activity. If you don't want to say that it's definitely paranormal. Uh, but what this person is seeing sounds like a shadow person. 
he says it was a black shadow and he could tell it was female since it had a very long dress like thing. And he's saying it moved from his uncle's room into the storage room. So he saw this thing walk. He got a, a female vibe from it. And again, a lot of people who see shadow people, there's no details. It's like, like they're saying, it's a shadow. It's just this black form, but people would be able to tell. And again, in our Halloween episode, we had Lori talk about a shadow person who was wearing a hat and she could tell it was male. Uh, so a lot of people see shadow people and they know kind of like, is it male or female? Is it, um, you know, an adult or a child? Uh, so th th this is interesting, you know, shadow person in the basement. And, and I do like that this person tried to replicate it. You know, every time he goes to the house, he goes into that basement, sits in the same spot and just tries to see if it happens again. Because if it does, then maybe it's just a trick of the light or, you know, cars outside with headlights can make things inside of a house look weird you know out of the corner of your eye it looks like something's moving but it's really just the light and the shadow playing so who knows but very interesting again doesn't have a lot to do with christmas but um i like that this happened near christmas again visiting relatives and saw a shadow person downstairs so cool story okay so we're down to two stories this is the penultimate one this is from user asbolamighty don't know what that means uh, four years ago, creepy Christmas potential paranormal visit. Say that five times fast. Hey guys, long time doubtful of the paranormal, although I have had one potentially two experiences that have caused me to doubt my beliefs. So sounds like this person's a skeptic, but has had a couple of things happen that maybe make him rethink that. One of those things occurred about seven hours ago, and it was kind of creepy. I probably wouldn't have mentioned it, had I not just started using Reddit again about three days ago, but I thought I would post it here. So due to having a family that doesn't celebrate Christmas due to religious reasons, I often spend Christmas with my girlfriend and her family. In my girlfriend's room at the top of her wardrobe is a music box, so another music box, which was a gift from her mother from a, from a Christmas years ago, I believe. It's just a little wind-up music box that you twist and it plays, We Wish You a Merry Christmas. Anyway, we'd all done the standard opening of the presents, pulled some crackers, and the crackers are like um, over in England, in the UK, they have uh, they're like little paper cardboard twisty things and you pull them and they pop, they crack, you know, and, and um, it's almost like a pinata sort of thing where there's just like candy and jokes and little things inside. I mean, it's, it's chintzy, but uh, they do that over there. And even me and my family started doing that a few years ago, just the, the Christmas crackers. Um, so they pulled some crackers, said Merry Christmas, et cetera. Then me and my girlfriend and her mom went upstairs to put the presents somewhere out of the way. My girlfriend's mom was talking about her own mother who died a few years ago and how she loved Christmas and wished she could still be there with them all. Straight after that, this music box starts going off on top of the wardrobe, way too high for anyone to have reached and turned, and nobody had even been near that part of the room. Also, interestingly, my girlfriend's room was previously her grandmother's room, and my girlfriend, my girlfriend only moved into the room after the death of her grandmother. My girlfriend's mother believe it to be a, believes it to be a message from her own mother, letting them all know she is still with them. We're all not sure, but it was interesting timing nonetheless, and I have no idea how it would have been set off otherwise. Anyways, what's everyone's thoughts? So, yeah, what are your thoughts on this one? It's another music box, and, and again, when you have an electronic device that's plugged in or you have something that runs on batteries, those things tend to go off Uh because the batteries could die, the switch could be moved, and just, you know, sometimes the switch is just barely in the off position, and a temperature fluctuation or something else shifting near it can just push it to the on position. And, and again, you see this on, like, the, the ghost hunting shows with the flashlights, and they put the, you know, the, the switch, like, right to off. And again, the slightest vibration can turn these things on, and it's it's not a ghost, it's just the, the way the, the contact is made for the electricity to complete the circuit music boxes don't have electricity it's completely mechanical so if it's not wound up it's not going to go off uh, other other possible explanations sure uh, but it is a little weird that we now have two music box uh stories one of them the first one it was broken this one they're saying it was up high on a shelf and it hadn't gone off and and again usually if you if you play with them for a while and it doesn't quite finish you know maybe a couple hours later it'll ding 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 you know it'll kind of finish its uh, wind up there to release the tension but this sounds like they were doing 
their Christmas. They were going about what they were doing and they're in the room. And then all of a sudden the music box starts playing. So another cool story and another, you know, not spooky, uh, strange, perhaps um, odd, perhaps. And now it's told, but um, cool nonetheless, not scary, but ni a nice little Christmas story that maybe this person's grandmother was there trying to send a message. So um, let's get to our last story for Christmas ghost stories. Okay, so this last one is a short one, and there's a photo attached to it. So there's a little bit of a visual here, which I think is pretty cool. Uh, so this comes to us from user Vanny946. This is five years ago, and this is a ghost of Christmas 2009. So this looks like a text message. And again, there's a photo down here, which I'll try to blow up. So this says, Christmas time 2009. I'm 10 years old, asleep in my room. My grandfather, we call him Pops, was at his girlfriend's house. Me and my mother are the only humans in the house. Children and dog are known to be very susceptible to the paranormal. Uh, as you can see here, my dog, Sweet Pea, is staring hard, very tense. My mom doesn't see what he's looking at and takes this picture of a Christmas card I had made for her. The light by the door was motion activated. The light was off right before she took the picture. Here is the Facebook post my mom made that night. Okay, this photo scares our family like you wouldn't believe. My dad was in bed, I was sitting alone in the living room, and I wanted to take this picture of the pretty card OP made me. If you look to the left-hand side, there is a tall man standing next to the door. Like I said, I was alone, and my dog is looking right at the figure. So I'm going to blow this up. So you can kind of see she's holding this Christmas card. It says, Merry Christmas. It's got a Christmas tree on it. There's a couch. Here's the dog. You can kind of see the blue collar. But to the left... Uh, there's this, you can see a door, a white door, and there's a black figure here. It looks like a coat and two legs, like black pant legs. So definitely looks like there's something there. Again, not enough info in this photo to really say what it is. And we're kind of going off the person's word here that this is a a photo of what they're saying, They you know, that no one else was really there. And again, I, I tend to not always love these photos because again, people will take a picture and then they look at it three months later and they swear no one else was there. But you know, most of us don't remember what we had for dinner last night. So how do you know who was in the room or where they were or what they were wearing from three months ago or a year ago or two years ago? So it definitely looks like there's something here in this left-hand side. Um, and I will put links to all these stories in the description. So if you guys are listening on audio, uh, this will be the last story. Uh, it is called Ghost of Christmas 2009. So you can look at it for yourselves if you want to pull it up and zoom in and just kind of see the figure that she's talking about. It looks like it's got its back to the camera. Like I said, it just looks like a long, dark black jacket and two black pants legs. And the dog, you can't really see where the dog is looking. It's kind of behind this Christmas card, but it does look to be looking in the general direction of this figure. But who knows? Uh, so very interesting. So that will do it for our Christmas ghost stories this year. I picked the best ones I could find. Uh, some of them were either very short or just didn't really say much uh, and not very interesting. So I tried to pick the, the most interesting ones. Like I said, I think there was a good mix here between spooky and heartwarming. So some of them are a little scary and, and disturbing. And the other ones are just like, oh, grandpa's here or grandma's here. So very cool. Uh, I am drinking this week. This is from Kismet Brewing. This is uh, Press Cider Donut. It's a kettle sour from our friends at Kismet Brewing. Uh, so Rich and Liz, if you guys watch the show, thank you. This is I, I've been hoping to get this one for years, and we never got up there to Massachusetts to get this particular beer in time in the fall. And uh, ex-wife Laura was up there in October and picked some up for me. So this is my third one now and I'm, I'm kind of like rationing these out, but I figured this is a good day to do it. It was a little bit snowy here. We're talking Christmas. Um, it tastes like apple cider, um, like an apple cider donut is just delicious. And I'm savoring this one and I have one more and I don't know when I'm going to get to that one, but I love them. So, um, so again, thank you all for listening. Thank you to everybody who's new to the channel. We've been getting a lot of subscribers lately. Uh, like a week or so ago, we were at 500 subscribers. I think we're over 540 now. So for all the new people watching and listening, thank you so much. Thank you for so much for sticking with us. We try to bring you interesting content every week and 
lesser known stories and just quaint things like that. And um, I'm hoping next week John will be on the show. We're going to talk about some Christmas movies and um, just to get that done before Christmas actually hits. So if you guys want to uh, watch some cool Christmas movies, we'll have some suggestions for you guys. And uh, until next week, everybody, rock and roll, Merry Christmas, Jingle Bell Rock.